Hello there, and welcome to my tutorial about tombs in Dwarf Fortress. In this video, I'm going to explain and explore with you how to use the tomb zone. So I'm going to give you a quick explanation of how to use it, what it's good for, and a couple of tips and tricks how to utilize it to its full potential. So first of all, to make a tomb zone work, we will require something to bury people in. So we go upstairs here now to our workshops and you can make any type of coffin out of rock, wood, glass or metal. These are materials that you can use for coffins. You find them in the furniture menu and that's what you generally use if you have a body available. If you don't have a body available, you can create rock slabs. These must be after they have been produced, engraved, with the name of the person they are dedicated to. As you see there, there's a couple of names here. That's because we can dedicate a slab to pretty much everything, to the pets that have died here, over to people that have died on this patch of ground here, over to all the people that have died in your fortress. The thing is, if you don't bury people, two things will happen. First of all, the relatives will be super unhappy about it, so lots of unhappiness. And the other thing is, a unburied person will or can eventually return as a ghost haunting your people. This will go on until you have built a proper burial space for them. If you have no body available, the slab is way to go. So these two tools we have at our disposal. So. There's a third usage of tombs that I want to uh, introduce here as well, and that's your nobles. Sadly, I don't have any to show off here, but barons and the like, they like to have a tomb before they die. So the tombs of nobles have some requirements in terms of internal value. So you put a coffin inside there first, then you decide for how valuable it is. And when it comes down to the value of the room, it works like all the other zones. The total value of all the items inside the zone determines the value. So if you are barren or whatever requires some really valuable thing, go forth, smooth the walls, engrave the walls, put statues inside there, put stuff that's worth a lot of money inside, and you're good to go. So the next thing we need to do is we need to draw the actual tomb zone on on it. Again, include the walls, because without the walls you would lose the monetary value of these, because only what's inside the zone gets counted, and then accept. So when we do this, the game will automatically assign a dead dwarf to this uh, tomb as soon as it happens that somebody dies. You can, of course, assign a tomb to a certain person, but here it is not possible because it has already been assigned to a certain dwarf, but the gist of it is you can assign tombs just like you can assign bedrooms to a certain person. If you want to have the tomb assigned to a certain baron or the like, have the game pause before you draw the zone, so there's no unwanted automatic designation. And that's pretty much it. Here what you see is something that I want to introduce because the way we did it here is if we'd put now extra coffins inside there, it wouldn't work, simply because there is only one tomb allowed, or one coffin allowed in per tomb. So, as you see here, I have lots of buried people inside there, and open coffins as well. So what I did here, you see it there, it's a one-on-one -on -one sized tomb zone. This way, you can bury lots of people in small chambers, and as you see there, it even works with the memorial slabs. The slabs don't require their own tomb zone, as you see there. They are zone-less, so to say. So, that's the gist of it. All in all, you need tombs for your, uh, for your, uh, for your fortress sooner or later, and, well, noblemen want really fancy tombs, and you will have to have some sort of, uh, well, economy class, because otherwise you will really have problems dealing with all the bodies. Don't try to dispose of dwarven bodies in a way like burning them, or, or 
letting them otherwise rot anywhere, it will provide problems and unhappiness for your dwarfs. So, I hope you found that helpful. Let me know if you have any further comments down below the lines. I'd love to hear from you folks. And as usual, leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed and consider subscribing. There's daily content coming up from my side. And if you like that one, chances are you like the rest as well. Also, check out the playlist link down there leading to all the other Dwarf Fortress tutorials that I've made so far, so you can indulge yourself and learn a few things about the game meanwhile. So, see you guys next time, and have a good one.